I never used to be a very big fan of cantaloupes or what we call rock melons here in New Zealand because I always found them a little bit kind of mushy and not the nicest taste. That was until I grew my own. Homegrown melons tend to be sweeter, juicier, and have a much better texture than the ones you find at the store because you can leave them on the vines until they're perfectly ripe. Eating them fresh from the garden too is honestly unbeatable and the satisfaction of growing them yourself only adds to the experience. So today I'm gonna to take you right through from start to finish on how to grow your own cantaloupe melons. And we're also gonna grow the lesser known canary melons, which are well worth growing, but you'll see as we go. So if you're ready, let's get into it. I've decided to grow my melons vertically because rock melons or cantaloupes are particularly well suited for this method. They have a vining nature, which makes them ideal for trellising and it's a really good way to maximise space, especially in smaller gardens. It also helps to enhance air circulation around the leaves, reducing humidity and the risk of diseases, plus elevating the fruit keeps it up off the ground, minimising the chances of rot and just making harvesting a bit easier too. So we're going on a bit of a forage, I've got my shovel here, because I remember years ago I was talking to an old farmer who would grow these massive watermelons that were so impressive, and I asked him back then what his secret was, and basically he told me that he would plant his melons in the areas where he had his cows over the winter, and so all of the manure had really enriched the soil, leading to his melons doing so well. So I wanted to try and replicate this by collecting some of this cow manure. We're gonna plant it in the garden where I'm gonna put the melons. I am burying it directly in the garden and it is still a few months before I actually will be ready to plant my melons in the garden. It's still winter right now. So it's gonna have a chance to break down, decompose and really enrich the soil with a whole lot of nutrients, organic matter and just really good stuff to hopefully mean our melons will do super well. So this is just what I'm doing this time around since I'm a little bit more prepared doing this in advance. But if you need to just prepare the soil and plant your plants straight away, then you can use things like sheep manure pallets, which work pretty well, or even things like worm castings or already aged manure. And if you don't have any of that, even just some fresh compost should do the trick and they should do pretty well just with that. So here we have our little seeds, and these plants need a decent time over the summer to grow and mature. So I'm starting my seeds around mid-spring, so that by the time I transplant them closer to summer, the outside soil temperature will be warming up, which is what these really need to grow well. If you've got plenty of seeds, it is often good to plant several seeds into each pot. That way, if they don't all sprout, you should still have at least one plant per pot, and you can just thin out the extras later on. Let's give them a bit of water and I'm gonna bring them inside to germinate since it's still a bit cold outdoors. So three weeks later and we have some seedlings, but I didn't get the best germination rate, which again is why planting several seeds per pot would have been better because now I'm gonna plant some more seeds in here, but these ones are now gonna be a bit behind the others, but that's okay. Hopefully they should still have enough time this season to grow and mature. All right, time to plant the seedlings out and we'll get the garden ready by giving it a deep water and I'm covering it in straw mulch as well to keep the moisture in over the summer. If you are worried about slugs at all eating your seedlings though, you might wanna wait until the plants are a bit bigger before you put the mulch around them. These are the rock melon seedlings here. They're doing good and the new seeds have sprouted as well. And the other melon seedlings are looking good too. These roots are looking nice and healthy too, and they should really enjoy this rich soil. So with nutrient rich soil, good drainage and plenty of sun, these plants should have everything they need to grow strong and produce some tasty fruits. Okay, so the plants are coming along well. Quite slowly so far, it hasn't been that hot yet, but it is getting warmer now, so I think they should really take off pretty soon. There's even some peas starting to sprout from the pea straw. But I'm gonna give the melons a bit of a helping hand onto the trellis. I'm just using some little cotton ties and gently tying them on. They do have some of their own tendrils as well, so they should do a bit of the climbing themselves now that I've given them a helping hand to start off with. There are some flowers forming too. They're pretty much all male flowers at this point, which is pretty common in the cucurbit family. Each plant will eventually produce both male and female flowers, and I'll show you the difference when that happens. 
It's thought that the male flowers often develop first to attract pollinators and help them recognize the flowers before the females bloom, which can enhance the pollination success when the female flowers do eventually appear. At this point, I'm gonna give the plants a nutrient boost with some liquid seaweed fertilizer. And since they're shaded right now, I'm pouring it all over the leaves as well, which is a good way to get quick absorption into the plants. These plants have been growing so fast these past few weeks and they've reached the top of the trellis. They're looking so healthy and lush and they're managing to latch onto the trellis quite well too. Maybe a little too well in this case, <laughs> strangling its own flower. But there's lots of insects around, which is great to see since there are so many flowers at this point. So this here is what a female flower looks like. The most obvious way to know it's female is by the large ovary at the base, and this will turn into the fruit once the flower's been pollinated. And if you look at a male flower in comparison, it's just a flower with a thin stalk at the base, and this difference can be quite helpful to know, especially if you don't have a lot of pollinators around in your garden, because you can always do some hand pollination using a paintbrush or something like that. You basically just move the pollen from the middle of the male flower onto the stigma of the female flower, which is down in the center. But for me, the insects are doing an awesome job, as you can see from all these young fruits that are forming on the vines. There's even this bigger fruit down here, but by the looks of it, it looks like it's been gnawed by a rat or something. It's kind of managing to heal over a bit, but yeah, I might need to get Snowy out here to do a better job at pest control. This is what's so cool about growing melons. Once the fruits have been pollinated, they can just grow so fast, blowing up in size in just a week or two, to the point where you can often notice quite a difference even every day. And as well as the fruits that are getting bigger, there are lots of new ones coming on as well. And I'm gonna give the plants another boost to keep them going strong. This time though, using some worm tea from my worm farm. I'll dilute it a bit, which helps to avoid burning the plants and make sure the nutrients spread evenly. But this worm tea should be rich in nutrients and beneficial microbes. So it can give the plants an instant boost, promoting healthy growth and fruit development, while also helping to improve the soil structure. And with the fruit growing so quickly now, consistent watering is especially important. Rock melons need a steady supply of moisture since the fruits hold so much water. I like to water deeply around three times a week, depending on how hot it is, letting the top layer of soil dry out a bit between waterings while keeping the deeper soil moist. As the fruit ripens, you can cut back on the watering a bit to help the melons concentrate their sugars for that perfect sweet flavor. With the fruits continuing to get larger and closer to maturity, it's good to see them still holding on strong to the vine. And it's kind of surprising how well they hold on on their own, even when they do get quite heavy. Some people use slings made from fabric or netting tied onto the trellis to help cradle the melons and prevent them from falling. But for me, I'm just gonna do it the lazy way and let them hang on there by themselves and see what happens because when I've done this before, they tend to do a pretty good job of hanging on right up until when they come fully ripe, which is when they can start to fall off a bit more easily. All right, so we're now in autumn and these cantaloupes or rock melons are finally ripening up. So I'm very relieved about that because I was kind of expecting the first month of autumn to be still quite warm and summery, but it's been cooler than expected. So you can see these plants are starting to die back, go a little bit crispy, and that's pretty normal, of course, for these plants to die off in the winter anyway. So there are a few signs to look out for to tell when your melon is perfectly ripe, and it depends on the type of melon too. So we'll start with these ones. So the first thing is to look at the color of them. You can see some of these still have a bit of a green color in behind that webbing, and then others are getting a more golden color. So when they turn a lot more golden, then that's what you wanna look out for. And then the next thing is to use your nose. So even just sitting here, I can smell that sweet fruity aroma coming off of these melons. And you can just go in nice and close and smell the individual melons. If they smell nice and fruity, then they will probably taste pretty nice and fruity. There's one other thing I like to look out for too. If you look closely around the stem of where the melon is attached, you can see that it is starting to kind of split or crack a little bit in the skin. It's pretty subtle, 
but as that starts to split, that shows that the melon is getting very close to just dropping off the vine and is nice and ripe. So check on them every day when they're getting close to that point and you should be able to harvest a perfect melon. As for these ones, to tell when they're ripe, the first thing you want to look out for is the colour. And you can see the colour of this is bright yellow compared to the ones that are not ripe yet, have a lot more of a green colour to the skin. Same with these as well, you can look at where the stem's attached and see a little bit of splitting there and that the stem is starting to look a little bit drier. And if you look at the blossom end of these two and you give it a press, it is just giving slightly. You don't want it to be soft, but just have a little bit of give to it. And while you're there, have a smell and that is smelling really, really nice and ripe like the other ones there. So this one should definitely be ripe and ready to pick. There we go, came off fairly easily. Smells good. Oh my God, I just realized how that looked. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm. Oh, that's good. It still has quite like a firmness to it, which I really like because I find that sometimes cantaloupes are a little bit kind of squishy for me. Maybe they're a bit overripe, whereas this has a real good yeah, firmness, good sweetness. And that's sometimes the thing that you find when you grow your own food is that you sometimes end up liking things that you might not really have liked previously when you've only bought it from the store. But when you grow things yourself, you're picking them so much fresher. They're ripening straight on the plant as well. They're not picked too early and then left to ripen later on, in which case the sugars don't develop in the same way. So yeah, getting these straight from the plant, eating them straight away is really, really good. Mm. Best one I've tasted by far. All right, time for the canary melon. Ooh, look at that. That looks so good. Amazing. Oh wow, it's so juicy. There's so much juice coming out of that. Let me try that. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. I was not expecting that. Hmm. The seeds are awful. They're not like other melon seeds. Huh. Very papery. <laughs> so don't eat the seeds, but this juice in here is just insanely sweet. It's like candy, incredible. All right, if you're excited for this, here goes. Oh my God. <laughs> that is insane. I'm actually in shock how good that is. That is like better than probably any watermelon, any honeydew, any cantaloupe, any other melon I've ever eaten. That is crazy. Holy, that is like the most sweetest candy flavored melon I've ever had. If you get a chance to grow these, I would definitely recommend this very, very highly. Like this is crazy how sweet this is. Yum. It's like the sweetness of like a very sweet grape. It's so, so sweet, but like in a nice way. It's like vanilla honey flavored. It's crazy. And look at how beautiful the flesh is as well and a stunning skin on the outside. An absolutely amazing melon. In the end, I was able to harvest 17 cantaloupes and around a dozen or so canary melons. And as well as giving some away because it was just way too many for just me to eat, I decided to try and dehydrate some. So I just sliced them up, put them in a dehydrator, and they ended up actually turning out pretty cool. So here I've got a couple of them to try. We've got the cantaloupe and the canary melon. So let's see. Mmm. It's crazy how much of the flavor stays in there. Like, it's really, really strong flavor, a lot of sweetness that comes with it. I like it. And how about this one? Also very good, very sweet. And they are awesome little snack that I can eat all through the winter. Delicious. <laughs> if you'd like to also see how to grow your own watermelons, then check out this video over here, where I show you start to finish the full growing process, including some pretty awesome varieties. Otherwise, good luck with the melon growing. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.